Don't ask me any more details. I thought you were out plowing. No, I was trying Good to evening be evening and welcome to the January 6, 2014 <laughs> meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, before we go to public comment, um, I'd like to just read a little blurb from an email the DPW director sent me, which he asked me to read um, tonight. Please be advised that town crews were unable to collect all trash and recycling carts left out for pickup today, Monday, January 6th. Crews will be out again tomorrow and over the next few days to collect all trash and recycling carts left out for today's pickup, as well as carts remaining from last week. We apologize for the delay. Thanks for your patience. Keith Noyes, Director of Public Works. Fred, anything you want to add to that? Or? I know that uh, crews have been out there out Saturday. We put them in on Saturday. They were out till 3.30. Mm. Uh, came in at 7. Um, worked all day. We're not able to get it done. We had four full crews out, four trucks out, in addition to uh, the people who were out uh, taking care of uh, salting and sanding where necessary and moving snow and so on and so forth. So we had quite a sizable crew out, crew of people out working over the weekend. Um, we did not have them out working on Sunday. Uh, there will be full crews out. Uh, they're out today. They'll be out tomorrow, and they'll continue to be out until, in fact, we, we get all this picked up. So. Yeah. Um, one thing after we talked today that popped into my mind, how, does this denote any change to the, I think the Christmas tree stuff was planned for this week, or where would they sit in the, the I've, priorities? Or I've had no notice, <coughs> excuse me, with regards to a change in that. I see the trees out. I've also noticed some that were picked up. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think they're trying to do that as they can. So people should continue to put their trees out? I would out. continue to put them out. Yeah. Okay. I, I would think the trash and recycling would be a priority over yeah. the Christmas yeah, trees. Right. and whatever. Okay, public comment period. Uh, would anyone from the public wish to comment? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> Sir? I thought you were going to introduce people first. <laughs> oh, I forgot that. <laughs> My far left, <laughs> Selectman Mike Pierce. Thank you, Arthur. My immediate left, Selectman Phil Bean. To my far right, Selectman Mike Pluff. To his left, Selectman Mary Louise Wolsey. To my immediate right, Town Manager Fred Welch, and um, at the podium, Arthur Modi, Moody of Thompson Road. <laughs> he couldn't wait to hear you say something, Arthur. That was the deal. Minutes, three minutes. <coughs> Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> uh, I guess I don't even have to give my address, <laughs> <laughs> which changes the pickup this week. Uh, last week's uh, soliloquy by Mr. Bean on the state <coughs> encumbrances on our taxpayers uh, made the front page by Mr. Reed, the Hampton Union, right beside a picture of a Northampton apparatus practically tipped over in responding to I-95, the toll road. Uh, the liquor stores and the toll plaza, when they moved the toll plaza not to near the top, Northampton line. They didn't want to go over because they knew Hampton was better employed, <laughs> employed. Uh, they did build an overpass in Northampton, but guess who covers it? Hampton, because it's much easier for our ambulance and fire engines to get there. That's, I'm speaking of everything that happened in the 90s when I was a selectman. I don't know what the situation is today. But the liquor stores were built then. First one southbound. Wasn't even a public hearing to begin that mm. in Concord, in the legislature. It was during the conference committee of the capital budget that they added it. They added engineering, design, site work. And they already had land in Hampton Falls, but Hampton Falls didn't want it. <laughs> 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 and that land is now put in the jurisdiction of a housing authority in Concord, but Hampton Falls doesn't want multifamily either, I'm sure. Uh, so it's vacant. Uh, the, north, the, south, the northbound one was built later, and of course they came into the selectmen's meeting, criticized the town, because they understood the, 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 the sewer went out there. 
they actually came to the Select Committee and criticized us for not having the sewer out there at that time. Uh, I know, I know the, uh, we had the liquor commissioners down, all three of them, and they gave a big spiel of how much money they made for the state. And we had a selectman who shall remain nameless, mm -hmm. <laughs> said, uh, we didn't have TV in those days. Uh, he said he saw nothing honorable, honorable about being the biggest drug pushers in the country. Well, we were negotiating to get expenses for going out there. And so they refused to come back. So I had to go to Concord as chairman. Uh, this chairman of the State Liquor Commission had his stenographer there. And they refused to pay anything on the ambulance because we charge the clients, whether we transport or not. Whether we fix them up or they refuse transport, we don't charge them in those cases. But they would pay for fire response to alarms, stuff like that. So we had a dumpster fire out there, and the chief considered that southbound store as a distillery. So he unloaded everybody out there. It cost us $12,000 in overtime and callback. State liquor offers a few hundred, and the rest of the selectmen or some of the three of those like refused to accept it because they considered it economic development, employee employment. But we've been out there a lot. We go out to unlock cars in the 90s of the clients of the liquor store, even though we didn't do it in town for our own residents mm -hmm. because the police department had paid a played a paid a claim against uh, damaging their somebody's locks, power locks. Yeah. So no more. Uh, I remember one Sunday, a uh, Connecticut car at the liquor store getting some cheap booze before they went home, uh, lost their dog, ran away. So what happened was the state police had finally found them before, after they left and took them to our pound, the company on Route 1 that we had an account with, and we got charged <laughs> because the state police don't have a pound over in Epping, headquarters of Troop A. Yeah. Those are some of the things I remember just on I-95. The big thing was the fact that the Department of Transportation refuses to put a turnaround before Taylor River Bridge into Hampton Falls. Yeah. Our apparatus had to go all the way to Seabrook to come mm, back. Yeah. Once they did try to go across the medium in Hampton Falls, got stuck, toe damage to the uh, engine. Uh, that's still the case. The DOT says there's not enough leaving the sun southbound lane uh, the liquor store. The Taylor River Bridge, there's not enough put it official turnaround. That's a contention that's probably still affected. I, I don't think there is one. Whether well, there's one in Hampton Falls, I don't know. But uh, those are just, that's just I-95. Maybe we'll get to the beach next week. Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> Anyone else from the public? Candace? I'm Candace Stelmack. 488 High Street, uh, and a member of the Deacon Tuck Grist Milk Committee. And before I read um, my request of the selectmen, I just wanted to let people know that uh, those of you who keep inquiring about where the money is that was raised for the grist mill, why it isn't spent, and all these little questions, we're kind of reacting to what's going on with the dam. We don't want to fix the grist mill and then have the dam make changes and the uh, expert builders that we have insist that the foundation and the roof be the first things that we do. Mm -hmm. So we're running into a delay. Therefore, I am asking that um, the Board of Selectmen consider um, a warrant article that I typed up instead of me going out and doing a citizen's petition 
that you would have a selectman's board of selectmen warrant article to show your support for fixing the mill and uh, just roll over the money in effect that was uh, voted by the, the citizens to restore the mill and just see that it gets rolled over and extended for another five years because we have no idea how long it's going to take to take care of the uh, the dam and we don't want that to damage the work that we do on the grist mill and I've given you all copies of it and we'll be discussing it more I guess at the uh, February meeting where you go over articles so if you don't if you don't agree to put one in then let me know and I'll do a citizens but I'd really rather you people show support for it. Mm -hmm. Appreciate um, it. I'll just let you know we're discussing warrant articles tonight. <coughs> I made a note at the end. There's actually two that aren't on the list at this point. We've got to discuss one of which is that. And, okay. Um, you should know at the end of tonight's meeting. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Paul. Anybody else from the public? Mr. Chairman, right before we uh, uh, move on from that subject, we have a, a policy, I believe, that's in place Wednesday night close of business. Therefore, I'm not going to think about this tonight. Thank you. Well, you can make that motion or whatever, but given the fact that we have one week um, That's true, left. but if this one problem week. has been going on for a while. It's, okay, it's not Mike, like let, it's just coming in. Excuse me, it. Mr. Chairman. It's not hasn't just come up today. This has been going on for a long period of time. And for it to come in late like this is just totally unacceptable. Thank okay. you. Okay. You can make a motion or whatever when we get to that. Um, Announcements and community calendar. Mike? Uh, yes, I'd like to say a couple things. I've heard that there's a lot of complaints about the trash and the recycling not being picked up in a timely fashion. I was out and about on Thursday and Friday, not because I wanted to be particularly, but when we have a public works department that puts in the effort they did to clear the roads, the fire apparatus, the ambulances, and all those sorts of things. They put in a tremendous effort. That has to have some priority over somebody getting their trash emptied. I'm sorry. That trash can sit there for a couple of weeks and not hurt anything. Not getting to an emergency call with the ambulance, that can be life or death in a matter of minutes. So I don't think that any of the complaints I've heard so far are justified about the recycling and the trash. And I think the Public Works did a beautiful job of getting the roads cleared <coughs> for public safety, number one. And if they didn't get it all picked up after they got doing that job, well, they had Wednesday was a holiday, Thursday was a snowstorm, Friday was a snowstorm. They're not going to get all that picked up on one day. That's just not going to happen, even in a good day. So I think we all have to give them a little bit of space here and say, wonderful job on clearing the roads for emergency vehicles, and say the trash will get done when it gets done. Thank you. Bill? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, echo uh, Selectman Pierce's uh, eloquent remarks. Uh, public Works, Fire, uh, the Headquarters Element, Mr. Welch, uh, under your leadership, uh, the Police Department, adverse weather, uh, adverse, adverse effects of uh, terrain and climate, and uh, it inspires confidence in uh, the value of our tax dollar and the uh, performance of the fine young and men and women in this town. Uh, and the taxpayers appreciate that, and it is uh, a uh, uh, a, a list, uh, a descending list of, of priorities, and certainly uh, transportation and safety and uh, uh, protection of life and property is at the, at the foremost of those. And uh, Public Works does a great job, and they're going to get your trash. Right. Thank you. Okay. Mike? No, I think it's been said. <laughs> Mary Louise? Yeah, that was an unfortunate confluence of events that happened with the holiday and the storm and all the other stuff, and I, I think. That's fair to say we did the best we could. However, I will make another plea once again for all of you to sign up, please, please, for notification oh, yeah. from the Public Works Department in case of storm. So you get your email, your phone number in. I don't do Facebook, but Facebook is an option on that as well. And they do call and they do send you email and they do keep you up to date so that you can have some fast uh, information and update when we have storm and uh, emergency situations like that. So please sign on on the website. I would just add to what Mary Louise said, the links to sign up for those three yeah. capabilities is right on the front page of the website on the right side. 
if you don't um, have computer access to the internet or whatever, you can come into town hall and there's a form you can fill out to get the voice um, notification call. over the phone. Okay. Um, <coughs> first item of the agenda, approval of minutes from December 23rd. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Mary Louise, on page four, the last full paragraph down that starts, Slut and Woolsey stated that they draft an annual budget and we have surrendered 750000 I honestly don't remember what you said, but the reality is we added $750,000 Well, we used 750000 right. from the overlay. We added that to... We added to the tax rate. To We added it to offset the tax rate. No, we added it to the tax rate. That 750000 became an additional sum of money that people were taxed on in order to build up that reserve. Oh, okay. Okay. So I if we can change surrendered to added, I think that would okay. clarify mm -hmm. what when I wasn't sure what you said or whatever. Okay. On page five. <coughs> no. Okay. Page six. Page seven. Page eight. Page 9, page 10, page 11. I will make a motion to approve the December 23rd minutes as amended. I'll second that. Seconded by Selectman Pierce. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on page 11, with regard to the little comment that we made on the group photo of the town report, do we have any headway? What's the deadline, Fred? Uh, no, you're not near it. We're, oh, we're okay. fine. We're okay. fine. Okay. We're fine. We'll get done. A month or yes. Whatever. Okay. So Probably next week or so. Don't want it to slip yeah. Oh no. no, the boss has it. Oh, appreciate it. Uh, Fred, tell me report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, before the end of January, I will be appointing a committee composed of department heads or the designees to review all insurance claims of any nature filed with the town. The objective of this committee is to determine if additional work or training is, is necessary to decrease costs to the community due to claim filings. I might tell you that we've gone from just um, non-experience rated to experience rated starting this coming year, so it's in 2014. Mm -hmm. So that's going to start in June, so we need to be on top of this before we get there. Victor, what kind of claims? Are you talking about claims from members? Other than all, all claims other than workers' compensation. Property and liability. Property, Property liability. and liability. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the DPW has placed on their website the new <coughs> trash and recycling pickup schedule. Please double check to see when your street is scheduled for pickup. The routes have changed as of, uh, as of today, January 6th. I have instructed the Public Works Department to place on their website the board's adopted rules on cart maintenance and replacement for trash and recycling carts. I think that's important. I uh, saw that wasn't there, so we, uh, we're asking them to take care of that immediately. Okay. The last day to submit petition to warrant articles is January 14th at 5 p.m. in the Selectman's office. I believe the Budget Committee has a meeting that night at 7 o'clock, probably to consider any later articles that are filed in the last day. The deliberative session of town meeting is scheduled for February 1st, and the town election is scheduled for March 11th, both at Winnicott at High School. Just for the board's information, um, I believe, as uh, Mr. Swosser had mentioned, we have received the uh, um, funds from the state of New Hampshire for rooms and meals uh, reimbursement uh, to the town in the amount of $662,593.82. And as usual, it came on the next to the last day of the year. Mm -hmm. So um, I realize that that's, uh, that's important to them because they use this to increase their surplus balance to make sure they have a positive figure and things. So, uh, And I'll make an additional comment that I did talk to uh, a proprietor of a, uh, a business in town who contributes more than half of that sum every, each year. Mm. That's just one business. Mm. And I know that there are at least two others that can Two others that that uh, receive or disperse funds to the state that almost equal that amount. Oh. So uh, the state can't be complaining too much about the fact that they're they're light on money from Hampton. 
Um, they're because lying it's, anyway. Well, I, I understand they're lying, but that's the way that is. Um, I just wanted to make note, too, uh, for the town trustees. They've done a terrific job this year. They had a budget of $600,000 in revenues due to the town, and they actually contributed $648,752.86 by the end of the year. So that was a very, a very, good, uh, a very good job on their part. Um, you mentioned the claims history. Uh, Church Street Station, uh, they continue to work diligently on the Church Street Station. Uh, anybody, you know, any member of the board wants to take a tour and take a look and see how far they've come along, please call Keith and I'm sure he can arrange something for you to go and take a look at it. But they're, they're pushing right along. Not during a snowstorm. Even during the snowstorm. Actually, they were no, doing... No, no, I mean no tours. Oh, no tours during the snowstorm, right. no. Uh, they are doing, continuing to doing uh, wallboard and ceilings. Uh, they're wow. continuing the installation of H HVAC ductwork and accessories. The contractor, electrical <coughs> subcontractor, uh, has continued installation, the rough-in and the lighting installations, along with convenience outlets and switches throughout the building. Oh. Um, and the concrete people are continuing to grind concrete and, and set forms and uh, d do chamber work within the uh, lower level of the building. So they're moving along quite quickly. Mr. Chairman, we have received a petition from Seacoast Family Promise, uh, which I believe the board has received in your pile tonight, mm -hmm. in, your, in your handouts tonight. So just so everybody knows, it has the required number of signatures. It is a, it is a valid petition. Okay, and this it, is a charity that is not currently? It's a charity not currently on okay. the, on the, uh, on the, uh, okay. the list. Um, it, it is for $7,000. That was Child and Family Services. <coughs> that was a different one. Oh. That's correct. I'm oh, okay. sorry. That was Crossroads. Child and Family Services was the one. It was supposed to petition. Also, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Well. They, they right. petitioned as well. Crossroads came off and uh, C Care Mental, C Care Health. I have to Whatever. try to remember now because there's so many, there's so many uh, mm. C type agencies <laughs> begin with C and the one of those came off the, because they'd gone out of business last October, so oh. uh, so we deleted them as well. I do have, Mr. Chairman, just one other thing, and that is that uh, the board voted uh, back in November 18th to uh, authorize withdrawal from the regional uh, refuse disposal yes. district, and I have the paperwork here, if you don't mind signing it later. Just pass it around and, and, and get it done. You've already voted it, so you don't have to do anything. Just, just so sign the document. Yeah. Okay. And that's it, sir. Okay. Any questions for Fred? Sure. I have a couple of comments. One comment is we're getting six hundred and some thousand dollars back from the state. That puts a big dent in that what one or two million that we figure that we're spending on them, doesn't it? Paul? Actually, we Paul. get six hundred thousand every year from the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That and doesn't include the fifty-two million they did they took away for disbursements. And another 52 million they took away for disbursements that we received each year, mm -hmm. uh, something in the order of well over a hundred thousand dollars. They discontinued paying us the last two years. And plus, they stopped contributing to the retirement fund. Right. Not even counting that. That's a That's sizable. That's a huge amount. chunk. Right. That's so I think gigantic. we're still holding the bag. Yeah. It's a empty, big bag. Empty right. bag. Um, now pretty empty anyway. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. It's a big bag. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions for yeah, I want to clarify on that uh, meals and rooms. That that formula provides uh, um, relief, as uh, some would call it, and that is a universal application across all municipalities. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. So we gain no advantage nor right. deficit from that. Is that true? It's that's true. It's done by population. Thank you. Per capita, based on fifty thousand, fifteen thousand in mm -hmm. Hampton, with no consideration for what goes on in the summer, <coughs> whatever. Right, right. What's also interesting, I looked up, is that total statewide rooms and meals last year, last year being 2012, was roughly about 250 million dollars, and I found it interesting that 77 or 79 million of that was Rockingham County. And if you look at that proportion, whatever it is, 28 or 30 percent, there's mm -hmm. no way that Rockingham County is 28 or 30 percent of the population of right. the state. So it's ro not just Hampton, mm -hmm. but Rockingham yeah. County. Yeah. The DRA will disclose um, a breakdown by county, just not down to the level of town right. or yep. whatever. So, okay. First item on the agenda under old business is 2014 warrant articles. Um, I looked at this list over the weekend, and I believe that there are seven articles that, that we need to touch on tonight. Some are, are very quick. Some may be um, involved. Uh, and I'll point out that next Monday, 
January 13th is the last meeting that we have yeah. prior to yeah. the cutoff date of, of January 14th. Um, I have a concern that I'm particularly sensitized to based on what went on Thursday and Friday that the possibility exists of us not having a, next, a meeting next Monday due to weather or whatever. So I think we ought to make an attempt to mm -hmm. finalize anything that we possibly can um, tonight mm -hmm. in anticipation <coughs> that uh, you know, might help avoid a special meeting on Tuesday or something like that if we do have a um, weather situation. Um, I'd like to take the same approach that, and, and I'll actually rattle off just in case you people have articles that I don't bring up. I'll quickly let you know what ones I think we've got to very quickly touch on um, versus some, of the, some discussion. The Teamster CBA, the two firefighters um, CBA mm -hmm. warrant articles in anticipation of our um, item farther down the agenda related to ratification or whatever. Yep. The Refra Recreation Infrastructure Fund. Um, cemetery burial trust fund. I don't think we really need to talk about that, no. but I think we need to recognize the amount still needs to mm -hmm. um, be changed. The wastewater system connection fee article, the solid waste ordinance amendments article, um, and the entertainment ordinance um, yeah. amendments article. That I think we need to touch on all of those. Yep. There are two other articles um, which, which I guess, based on what Mike said, we may or may not discuss depending on his motion, but one of which Mart Mark brought to my attention today is an issue to do with the tree warden. Um, mm -hmm. The second one is what Candace um, brought up. So right. going through in, in order, Teamsters, firefighters, and, and, and fire officers contract, I, I'm, I'd simply say that if we do, in fact, um, ratify these, a little bit farther down under old business, then we will simply need um, warrant articles right. for all three of those, and we should probably make that part of our motion in addition to ratification, right. the, the, the approval of the warrant article or whatever. And I think the, the language is, is, you know, Mark and Mike Schwartzer and Fred and whatever know what they need to do on that. Um, rec infrastructure. Um, we talked about that last week. I think we asked Fred to go back and talk to Diana and just wondering if you have any sort of update or anything you want to say on that at this point. Sir. Actually, I don't. I asked the, uh, the questions of, the, of her or the board. She's asked them of the vendor and she has not received the information back as of yet. So I'm hoping that will be done in time for your meeting next week so that we can get through this and just either say yes or no one way or the other so it's clear. D Diana is on the agenda anyway um, yes. next week for a uh, um, or quarterly report or whatever. Um, I'll just comment, and I, I think I'm probably repeating myself from last week, but personally, I'm not in favor of, of going ahead with a warrant article that's got eighty or eighty-five thousand dollars for lighting down there. Yeah. On, on the other hand, I, I, I don't um, necessarily want to just remove this warrant article or, or kill it because there, you know, there, there may very well be. Um, some things that need to be done, um, you know, to the lights or whatever and so on. So I guess um, we can either just leave that as it is until next Monday and hope yeah. that we have a meeting. The clock um, is ticking on that. I'm getting next, tired of looking at next it. Next Monday or yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I suppose we still were, we're really just talking about an amount or whatever. We would still have the opportunity at deliberative session because we wouldn't be changing the intent. Um, True. But we could change the mm -hmm. amount. So is that satisfactory? We'll leave it as yeah. is and yeah. plan well, on. I just want to add one comment to it. I don't want to see it here mon next Monday night. I want to see it in my mailbox by Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. You'll have it Friday. Period. Yeah. Okay. Period. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Cemetery burial trust. Uh, Mr. I'd Chairman, excuse me. What about in the number 17? That's just a move. What about it? Dead death. That's We've already trust. done. We, we're, we're happy with that. And we are? Okay. I'm happy with it, too. I just want to. One house committee didn't have a finalized date on it. That's all. Oh. Sweet. I don't know. Okay. 17, Mike. Hmm? 17, you mean? Hmm? 17. Okay, that's yes. the one that I promised uh, Mary Louise that I would uh, approach DRA to see if we could inf insert a few words about what the effect would be of the trade in value. Oh, that's right, I have, in right. fact, sent an email to them. Uh -huh. I'm sure they'll give me an answer by next Monday. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we're waiting for the DRA. No, yeah. She'll give me an answer. Are they un under snowstorm watch or are they going to be doing something? <laughs> <laughs> There's a snow watch there. Mike, okay. it snowed in up there. <laughs> You're not kidding.
cemetery burial trust fund, at, at what point do you anticipate a, an accurate number on that, Fred? 10,500 is yeah. the number the finance gave me. They I say that's that a conclusive so article. So that's yeah. basically done then. That's yeah, done. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, wastewater system connection fee. Um, I'm just going to retitle that. Well, yeah, actually. Mark, uh, Mark has sent us an email. He has basically made a proposal. Um, as to the direction that we take on that, and I'll okay. turn it over to Mark. To yeah, uh, does anybody not have a copy of that? I have an extra. I don't know what I got at this point. Uh, that's right. Just go ahead, Mark. I'll listen. It's, it's an email to Friday. Oh. I think I saw that. Yeah, I, I read that. You don't need to, I don't need a copy. Thank you. The email was funky today, though, so it's a good thing you didn't send it today. Yeah, no, it's Friday. Funky. Yeah. So, uh, funky. Yeah. yeah. We already have on the warrant under Article. 25, the adoption of RSA 149 Correct. I, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. and the part of Article 26 that dealt with the system use. Mm -hmm. I think when the if if the selectmen are given the authority under 149 I, the selectmen can do that mm -hmm. right. with the deliberation needed and the study needed, right. uh, engineering wise, to come up with the appropriate sum mm -hmm. without. Uh, the uncertainty of trying to spell it out in English, right. yeah. mm. <laughs> which has been a difficulty. So my proposal is that you confine our uh, Article 26 to the first portion, which is uh, cleaning up the, uh, the issue of the connection fee. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And basically what this does is it repeals last year's vote, which applied this connection fee only to residential. Right. And it also cleans up something that was existing and wasn't taken off, which was a $125 charge. Right. And basically imposes the sewer connection yeah. fee of $300 for each residential and non-residential property. So it becomes a much simpler mm -hmm. proposition. So you're going to go with, with that as the warrant article, then? If you wish. That sounds good to me. I agree it's with you. simple. I yeah. would um, make a motion to change the language to that contained in, in Mark's Yep. Recommendation in the email, and I'll actually read I'll it. It's very, it. yep. it's very, very short. Right now, I wouldn't want to read it before. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the town of Hampton vote to repeal its vote under Article 21 of the 2013 town meeting that enacted a sewer entrance fee, and instead to amend Section 406-5A of the Code of the Town of Hampton, New Hampshire, that now reads quote, a sewer permit fee of $125 per dwelling unit shall be charged, and by substituting thereafter the following provisions. One, sewer connection fee. Maybe it should say the following provision, Mark. Sure. If we're down to one. Sure. Um, sewer connection fee. A fee of $300 per sewer connection shall be charged for each residential and non-residential property being connected to the town's wastewater system to offset the cost of connection inspection and the production yeah. of connection location data and plans. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Okay. I think we're all set on that one. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. That's good. Okay. Number 32 now plus 33, the entertainment ordinance. Um, uh. <laughs> Mark and I and Fred met last Tuesday and talked about this one a little in, in our discussions essentially all rev revolved around a couple of definitions. Definitions being definition of building, yep. some technicalities, and, and probably most importantly, um, the definition of outside entertainment activity. Mark sent me a draft Friday afternoon. Um, I sent him back an email that had a suggestion of outside entertainment activity. It's it's basically two sentences. I can read that to you. That, and, um, that's not in here then. No. Okay. Thank you. And and I'll describe um, what my intent was. Um, at the public hearing, one of the, one of the concerns that that people expressed that that business owners expressed that I was sensitive to was, for example, the gentleman from the sea catch was, you know, geez, I've never had a complaint. I've been, um, you know, running my business there for, for a number of years, and I've been staying open with outside entertainment till midnight, and now I'm going to have to shut it down at 11 o'clock. And even though it's our intention to only enforce this in, in the environment of a complaint as opposed to proactively, we would kind of, the way it was worded, put him in a position of technically violating the ordinance, which would make some people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, I came up with an approach that, that I believe Mark um, liked, which kind of addresses that, so I'll, I'll read it. It's fairly short. This is the definition of outside entertainment activity. 
includes but is not limited to any live band, musician, performer, entertainer, disc jockey, comedian, person, concert, jukebox, karaoke equipment, record player, sound device, and or type of mechanical music device for the purpose of entertaining patrons in a location on the premises of a licensed establishment other than a fully enclosed building capable of containing noise emissions mm -hmm. that result in noise emissions that are audible beyond the property line of the premises. Mm -hmm. Okay. By adding that last sentence that says that results in noise em emissions that are audible yeah. beyond the property line of the premises, I believe, and I think Mark agrees, allows them at 11 o'clock, if they wish, to shift um, to a less obtrusive form of entertainment, a television set, a radio, perhaps an unamplified yeah. um, singer, you know, acoustical <coughs> or whatever, and they're not in technical violation of the ordinance, and then it only becomes yeah. an issue if somebody complains and if it's in fact audible. So that, that was my intent. That's so good. trying to just balance, like listen to what I the business has said. At least that Simple. sort of covers the uh, yeah. catch. Right. Because he's got a good point. It, it, it covers anybody. I mean, yeah. it, anybody that's outside, well, even if you're banging away music that's up to 75 dB at 11 o'clock, you don't have to totally cut out your entertainment. You can just totally shift to something that, that, yeah. that yeah. stays so in your property. So. We think we can enforce that from uh, the police point of view, the audible bit, Mark? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, we've we've uh, shared that with the police. I haven't gotten any comments back yet. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, if they do have anything to say, we'll hear it by next Monday. Jamie and Rich Sawyer were all in the loop on I this. know they've been a little concerned about right. how yeah. to really measure and fine and right. whatever enforce the rules. As long as it's enforceable by them, I'm all for it. Okay. I, I, I do want you to know there are another couple of little tweaks. Go ahead. I'm listening. Is that all right, Dick? <coughs> yep. Sure. Uh, the uh, definition of entertainment activity had a phrase in it that defined entertainment activity as one that is audible outside of the building or premises. That phrase doesn't belong there. Entertainment activity is, is regulatable right. by you regardless right. of whether right. there's an audible outside. Okay. You regulate things for purposes mm -hmm. of assembly permits, yeah. number of people in premises. Mm -hmm. It isn't just audible that is right. part of your consideration. Mm -hmm. right. well, thank you. Now well, that's, that's a good, good catch. Good to catch. <coughs> right. yeah. And so the next one uh, that uh, Dick brought up was that uh, we had included into the uh, right under the decibel uh, description a, a waiver for town sponsored activities and the thought was that uh, we would also want to be able to give you the authority to waive the, the problem for uh, activities sponsored by the Hampton Beach Village District or the state of New Hampshire. So when they blow the fireworks on New Year's Eve, I can't complain? <laughs> no, actually, actually me. I, I looked at that all of a sudden it popped in my head that fireworks hit my property have got to be yeah. over 75 uh, dB. Yes. Yeah. They're loud if you're there. I don't know how far, how well. I mean, I can hear it at my no. house really good. They, they, yeah. are, they are absolutely loud. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. I only have ocean. <laughs> <for that. laughs> yeah. So yeah. just yeah. in case that became an issue, we need the yeah. ability to. Yes. We were going to send you running down on the beach saying stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good luck. <laughs> it was pretty cold that night, too. I, I won't tell you the story now, but there's a funny story to do with <laughs> dogs and fireworks and me. But uh -oh. Whatever. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so anything else, Mark? That's uh, what you would see uh, next Monday. Good. Okay. Do we have um, then a consensus that yeah. this is the way sure. to go? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That sounds okay. good. Okay. We have two other issues that are, are potentially new warrant articles. If Selectman Pierce doesn't want to talk about those, <coughs> you can make a motion and and we'll either talk about them or we won't, depending on, on the results of your motion. The first one is something that, that Mark brought up to do with the um, tree warden. Mark, do you want to? What? Tree, tree warden. warden. Yep. Tree, tree warden. warden. I remember trees. That's a separate. Yeah, on, I got trees. On your agenda tonight is uh, an item that Fred has been working on for some time, uh, having to do with uh, under new business draft rules and regulations relative to public tree preservation and protection. Mm. And Fred was kind enough to uh, give me a whole stack of statutes that go with it. And <laughs> kind I of would have kind of like what I did. You say kind of That sounds like manure spreading to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was mechanical, too. <laughs> and so <laughs> what I did was uh, in looking at that, and uh, I realized that um, 
we have something to do first at town meeting before the regulations come forward. Uh, that is, uh, back in 2010, we at the town meeting had an article that passed about the tree warden. Mm -hmm. That article asked the state legislature to enact a uh, giving the towns the authority to appoint tree wardens mm -hmm. uh, because the law at that time uh, gave the director of forests, parks and forests, that authority, a state director rather than locally. So this was an effort uh, to, to get the legislature to give us the local authority. So the legislature, that article was passed and then in 2012 the state legislature did enact something regarding tree wardens. And basically it said a city or town may provide for the appointment of a tree warden or wardens. When it uses the phrase a city or town rather than the mm -hmm. governing body, which is you, mm -hmm. it means town meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in order for there to be an appointment of a tree warden in the first place, you need to put an article in front of the town meeting. Oh. And so what I've done is I have taken what you proposed to have the legislature enact but didn't <laughs> back in two the 2010 article that passed and plugged it into an article that says, shall the town of Hampton vote pursuant to RSA 231-139 to provide for the appointment of a tree warden and to determine the tree warden's duties in the following manner. And then I'm quoting verbatim what was asked of the townspeople before. And so I'll pass this out and in the coming week if you could take a look at it, that would be great. Oh, this is good. I think it's a well done. Well, well, what we're doing is we're just, it's yeah. really a housekeeping I, activity, yes. cleaning up some technicalities, no. and I think oh. what we're saying we is, oh. is we'll be deferring oh, the I'm item sure. under new business until yeah, probably okay. after the March ballot. Oh, is that good. correct, Mark? Right. Uh, yes. yes, and actu yes. actually what this, uh, as it was conceived back in 2010, mm -hmm. the regulations mm -hmm. that we we'll are be talking about would be promulgated by the tree warden uh, and then approved by you after a public hearing. Uh, right. So you're correct. It does put it off until after right. town meeting. Good. Right. This should relieve Keith or whoever is stuck with the job from, right. I well, got from the uncertainty of how you go about it. But on the other hand, as, uh, on a practical level, he should continue doing what he's been doing right. Right. since, since right. that appointment right. was made in yep. May of 2012. Specific. For whatever. Yeah. But this doesn't directly have anything to do with the fact we chopped down some trees that were not necessarily chopped down properly. Not to do with that at all. No. So what are we doing the about regulations that? Regulations will govern that. Are we going to cover that? Th there, are some there are some technicalities yeah. where we actually don't have the authority <coughs> to appoint a tree warden. Right. That right. needs to be cleaned up. Okay. And that's, all, that's what this is going right. to do. Correct. But that doesn't fix the problem we had recently. Then you get into the nuts and bolts of the regulations that you'll need to approve after the appointment. After the fact. Okay. Right. And will that have to be approved by town meeting also? <coughs> okay. No, because the, uh, the state law specifically says uh, that uh, the tree... Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. It's, it's, how the, it's what the town meeting says yeah. about who drafts the regulations. Okay. I got right. it. Good. I'm all set. Okay. So we're all set in that one yep. and we'll mm -hmm. look forward to that being an article 38, I guess. Yeah. Um, maybe 39 would the not actually be less than that because I think what we said is is the petitioned articles will right. be at the end. Yeah. Right. So this this tree warden will be selectman sponsored that will yeah. probably be probably article 34 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you um, for moving 79. E. That was good. Yep. Um, Candace's request. I'm in favor of of going ahead and entertaining that. Um, now, I will send you if you want to. Anybody have any objection to that? No. Yes, I do, um, because it's been uh, sitting out here for quite some time. And if they wanted to have a, a private petition, I have no problem with that whatsoever. They can bring that any time they count, can, as long as the law, the law allows. But having asking the selectmen to do this at the last minute, I think is totally inappropriate. Okay, I made a motion that we entertain it now. Mary Louise seconded. All in favor? All opposed? 4-1. Okay, so we look at it. Um, I'll read it. Okay. 
To the Board of Selectmen, subject, this is a request on behalf of the citizens of Hampton and the Board of Selectmen include this article as part of the Selectmen's Warrant Articles in order to protect the funds raised in 2012 and designated for the restoration of the Deacon Tuck Grist Mill. Um, shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $28,678. This sum is equal to the remaining funds in the Grist Mill Restoration Upgrades Fund which will lapse to the unassigned fund balance on March 11, 2014, and to fund set appropriations by a transfer of 28678 from the unassigned <coughs> fund balance. This shall be a non-lapsing account for RSA 32,7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the work is completed or till five years after passage of the article, whichever occurs first. Um, that's the request. I don't know who wrote it. I presume that if we, in fact, do... Um, agree to Candace's request and put it forward as a slip and sponsored warrant article that Mark will look at the language and, yeah. and whatever. So have to. Anybody comments, motions, questions, you whatever? You made the motion, I seconded it. Huh? The mo my motion was simply to discuss it. Oh, I'm okay. Because I knew Mike oh, okay. was opposed to it, so we had to get it on the table whether or not we're even going to discuss it. Um, I think that this um, makes sense. I think it, it, it's, um, I'm fine with it being a Sletman sponsored warrant article. We're simply. I'll move um, it subject to the overview of council. Okay, I will second that. Yeah. Did you second it, Mike? Yeah. Okay, I did. seconded by uh, Sletman Pluff. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay, 4 1, motion passes. Okay. I think we're done with Warren articles tonight and hopefully um, very little to do. Um, probably the biggest one is the solid waste ordinance amendments. Mark has not done those as of yet, I assume. Actually, what I've done is I've taken what you've already been seeing for weeks, mm -hmm. <laughs> plugged it in as if it were there so you would see what it looks like. Yeah. I still need to work this week with the DPW director, but yep. I yep. thought everybody might want a copy of this just sure. so you could see it. Sure. Yep. Oh. Sure. Uh, sometimes emailing something like this doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Not today, anyway. A lot of paper. <laughs> Thank uh, you. There's something funky going on. I don't know if it was my machine or what was going on, Fred, but you might check with Paul and see what was happening there. You're not uh, receiving things? No, what happens is when you click on, like, say, an email from, say, mm -hmm. Mark or from Richard or anybody, yeah. it would try to open it, and then it would come back and say, session closed. Waiting for database. Waiting for database. Mm. Whatever that means Doesn't to Paul. Doesn't make sense. Well, not to me either. That was happening between, well, <coughs> Richard called me and said something about looking at some stuff on the email right at the last minute, which I was not happy about. So it might have been my attitude. <laughs> it might have been my attitude might have been in the wrong place. But putting that aside, I clicked on it, and it would say such, it would kick me off, basically. Because it would, you know, expire. And then it, I'd have to log back in. And do the same thing. Then finally, at about the sixth time I did, I get one email open. <laughs> then I have to go through the next process okay. to do the next one. Now, it could be something on my end. I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying I have no clue. But the timing was bad because I was in a rush. Yeah, I'm jammed <laughs> up a bit. I spoke to Paul while he was fly, uh, plowing out his driveway during the storm. Uh, <laughs> they were descending or orders of priorities. One of those is selecting yeah. being replying to emails to other people. And, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get in with him this week. But I was experiencing the same kind of difficulties and more. And it's not my that's, stuff. That's crazy. Well, well if it's two of us having the same problem, chances are it's not either one of ours. Right. Yeah, it's not Maybe. somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Um, you just an email mention that to Paul. If I you will. Know. I'll talk to him in the morning. After Mark, get then shoveling. I, I have a question. If yeah. it, and take, I, I think, you know, we're, we're by and large mm -hmm. complete with all the others, with the exception of this solid waste yeah. article. What what happens to, to this one? I, again, where we're not, you know, we, there's if if we roll into next Monday and we get a snowstorm and we don't meet, what 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 is the state we'll of this? Maybe. Huh? We'll meet I suppose. I don't know. So, uh, the, the next Monday, while it is your last scheduled meeting, mm -hmm. right. there is still um, a deadline by which the warrant has to be right. signed mm -hmm. and uh, posted before the deliberative session. Mm -hmm. That, I believe, technically is the last, last deadline for mm -hmm. the selectmen to do anything. Um, so so, so technically, this 
a selectman sponsored warrant article can be language can be amended in between January 14th and the final approval of the warrant I believe so okay and so you can you can reschedule a meeting okay I got one more question Ho hopefully Martin. it won't snow and then how close are you with this mark pretty close uh, well it's a matter of taste matter of taste <laughs> when it comes to solid waste Taste? Taste? Is that a good choice <laughs> of words? No, I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> it's whether no, it tastes you're, good to you. You're close, though, with this. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's, yeah. it's you well, know, you'd made some changes before. Well, we can all look at it, and if we have it into a pickle next Monday, we can cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on warrant articles? Huh? Next yeah. item of the agenda, ratification of Teamster CBA tentative agreement. Accept the motion, or do you have a motion prepared? Um, I, why don't you let me read this, and then you can make the motion. How's that? Okay. Um, the town and the Teamsters Union have reached a tentative agreement at the negotiating table. The union membership has ratified the tentative agreement, and it is proposed that the selectmen ratify this evening. Teamsters represent town employees in several departments, including town hall employees, public works supervisory personnel, and civilian employees in the police department. This is a two-year agreement running from April 1, 2014 to March 31, 2016. The finance director has estimated the cost at about $15,000 for 2014 and $32,000 for 2015. The proposed wage scale contains across the board 1.25% increases, percent increases effective April 1, 2014 and April 1, 2015. In addition, there were adjustments to the starting rates for two positions. Effective April 1, 2014, new employee health insurance contributions will decrease from a level of 30% for the POS plan and 25% for the HMO to 25% for the POS and 20% for the HMO. We agreed to this concession in order to have consistency with the SEA and police tentative agreements. We just didn't feel that it was fair to have mm -hmm. one bargaining unit, new employees at a higher rate than the other. We've agreed to 25 and 20 with police and yeah. SEA and whatever, and that's something that we had discussed um, right along. The part-time weekend transfer station supervisor will not be covered by the union contract. Um, this tentative agreement, I believe, is fair to both sides. I recommend that selectmen ratify and that the voters support it. Did you want to make a motion I'll there, Louise? Okay. okay, do we have a second? Uh, seconded by um, Sletman Pluff. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, we got that one. Um, next issue on the agenda. Sletman's acceptance or rejection of recommendations in the fire fact-finding report. The selectmen, and the, the selectmen and the Firefighters Local 2664 and Fire Supervisors 3017 unions engaged in negotiations beginning in June. The two sides were unable to reach an agreement and a mediation session took place on October 17th. No, over all, no overall agreement was reached at the mediation session and the parties agreed to submit the unresolved issues to fact-finding. Fact-finding is a continuation of the collective bargaining process. It is not meant to supplant direct negotiations between the parties. Nevertheless, at times, parties cannot reach a successor agreement and it is necessary for a neutral to offer recommendations, hopefully to settle the unresolved issues and to bring a measure of finality to the present impasse. Um, I will read the fact finder's recommendations and conclusions directly, word for word, from his um, report. Fact finder's recommendations. The parties should agree to a one-year agreement for both bargaining units. The parties should agree that those employees eligible for step advancement should receive step increases. The salary schedule should be increased by 1.25 percent. There should be no other changes to the current contract language except for one tentative agreement related to EMT testing. My comment, the EMT testing issue is not a cost item in the contract. Fact finder's conclusion. Throughout this report, I have attempted to balance the interests of the Hampton firefighters and Hampton fire supervisors, the town of Hampton, and the citizens of Hampton. It is earnestly hoped that this report will be useful to the parties in reaching a successor agreement. Finance director has estimated the cost at $92,415 one year. That's the combination of the 
2664 and the 3017 uh, fire supervisors. It's my understanding that the fire union's negotiating team will recommend to its membership that they accept the fact finder's report. I've had no confirmation back that they've um, actually mm -hmm. met at whatever, although I did hear, don't know if it's true, that they were potentially meeting today. I personally believe it's in the best interest of the town for the selectmen to affect, to, to accept the uh, fact finder's recommendation, and does somebody want to make a motion on this? I will so move to accept. Somebody want to second that? I will second it. Okay. Discussion? Yes. Um, <coughs> I don't know how to phrase this, but I'm going to be careful how I say it. I'm a little disappointed how we got to this point. I think it's a nice way of saying it. It's about the best I can muster. I think that negotiations are exactly can, what... Can you speak up just a little, Mike, and have trouble hearing I think negotiations are the way to resolve and compromise and come to solutions. I don't care much for the way we got here at all. Having said that, that's all I have to say about it. Okay. Any further discussion? <coughs> okay. We have a motion by Mary Louise, seconded by um, yes, myself. Oh, so was you. He's yeah. Oh, so was you. you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Ooh. Okay. Good. And I believe at this point, the fact-finding document, uh, Mark, I don't know if you can clarify this, but I understand that the fact-finding document becomes a, a, a public document after 10 days of its issuance, which was December 16th. I'd, uh, I'd have to check on that, but... Mm. Okay. So when will we find out if the... If, if the um, <coughs> newspaper is interested in that, would I want you to touch base with Mark? I don't want to act like the attorney, but I believe from discussions with Matt Upton that's the case. So this should be available within a day or two after Mark can check on that. Make sense? Sure. Okay. When, when will the uh, membership ratify? I don't control the when the union don't, membership I, meets, I but it was my understanding this came through Matt Upton from whatever that, that they may have actually been meeting today. But don't we usually... Uh, we'll get an email. From don't we chair. usually vote on after they ratify? Uh, I asked Matt Upton about that, and, and typical protocol is that the union tends to vote on tentative mm -hmm. agreements or whatever prior to. Mm -hmm. There is no statutory requirement that that be the case, okay. and I just felt with the potential of only having one yeah. Meeting left, and who knows with yeah. snow, it was better to get it done. Oh, tonight. sure, no problem with that. Right. Just okay. want to make sure we weren't crossing any lines in the sand. Um, next item on the agenda, and you would not have seen it on the agenda from Friday, but you would have seen it on the agenda that was posted this afternoon on the website and on the front uh, front um, window. Um, mm -hmm. Neither Fred, Mark, or I remembered on Friday to get the. Um, issue of the Church Street um, parking lot lease on the agenda it popped into my mind this morning. Um, I called Christina. I asked her to add it to the agenda. She did. She put it on the website. She put it on the front window, um, whatever. So I had her running around so we couldn't be accused of trying to do anything sneaky, which was not the case. Just three people. Nobody picked up on it. I think, um, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, postpone that till next Monday because the public has not been properly notified. Well, they, they, they've been notified. Not as according to the legal definition, notification of public meetings. Mark, could you clarify for Mike the 24-hour the notice requirement in the meeting versus an item on the agenda? Yeah, I believe uh, specific items on the agenda don't need to be notified in that way. Your notice of your meeting itself needs to be 24 hours, well, then not the specific items. Okay, and the question of being open and transparent to the public so the public can have an opportunity to be here, that doesn't follow then. Well, well it's uh, hearing, the, the way the law works on that. Right. If, if, if this were a public hearing item, you'd have a different issue. The statutes vary as to different topics. Okay. about how specific you need to be, whether you need to be in the newspaper, whether it needs to be in public, certain mm -hmm. public places. It, mm -hmm. it all, it varies. An item like this uh -huh. would not need to be specifically mentioned on a, on a, on a uh, agenda for you to take it up. Well, let me put it this way. In relation to transparency to the public, somebody who had planned to come to the meeting when that was discussed, wouldn't know about it until later today unless he was on the computer. He wouldn't even be aware of it then. 
this well, morning, I, actually. I think it's a, a transparency issue with the public. Okay, you've made a motion. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? You made a motion to do what? A motion it. to oh, defer to it. it. Postpone it. No, I'm not in favor. Anybody want to second it? No. Motion fails for lack of a second. Okay. Mark, do you want to um, okay. cover this issue? Yes. Um, when the issue arose of whether we would be uh, installing bathroom facilities at the Church Street parking lot, uh, where there are not now any, and it was decided that there would be uh, the toilet facilities installed with a sewer line, a water line, mm -hmm. right. uh, a regular toilet as opposed to a porta potty. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, wanted to be sure that uh, in doing that work we would be uh, doing so in a spot where we would be entitled to be present for a while. And uh, in examining our Church Street parking lease, uh, on paper anyway, uh, the lease we had that began in 1995 with several extensions uh, would have expired in the year 2004, I believe. <laughs> and so uh, this, the uh, I we communicated with the diocese to say, uh, by the way, we would like to do this facility. Would you please give us your permission? Uh, and by the way, we would like to renew our lease for a period of time. They came back and, and asked for us <laughs> for revenue <laughs> figures of what we were making in the parking and found that we were doing a little better than we were in 1995. And so they, they wanted more rent than we had been paying since 1995. And so there has been some negotiation over that figure. Um, the latest uh, figure that has been proposed to me that I've passed to the board is that we uh, have rent that is increased for a year uh, from uh, the current figure of $11,000 to $17,000, which actually corresponds to what uh, the cost of uh, living adjustment would be if you ran it forward from 1995. And that would be effective April 1, 2014, and uh, for a uh, three-year period. Uh, however, for each year after the first year, the rent would go up $1,000. So that essentially <laughs> by the end of the fir initial three-year period and two subsequent three-year renewal periods, which we have the option for. Uh, if the $1,000 per year is, is added on, the ultimate in the last year, year nine, would be $25,000. So that is the proposal. And uh, there are ramifications for the default budget because this is an obligation, contractual obligation. And so, uh, if the board would like to accept this proposal, which is several s after several uh, back and forths, um, <coughs> then there would be a, a, a six thousand dollar hit to the uh, default budget for the year two thousand fourteen, and the and the budget committee meeting tomorrow night would want to factor that in because they're working with a bu default budget figure too, so. Uh, the motion that I would ask that you make is to uh, accept the proposal of the uh, diocese regarding the uh, uh, lease amendment and uh, to raise the rent to 17000 for the year beginning April 1, 2014 with $1,000 in each year thereafter. And I think also uh, you uh, you may need a motion to up the default budget figure, whatever that currently is, by six thousand dollars. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. It's an eminently fair document, I think. I'll uh, second discussion. Oh yeah, I have a lot to say about this. This is a very expensive phone call to the state of New Hampshire. Fourteen thousand dollars per per year when we get to the end of that little run for putting a bathroom on private property, which I'm deadly, dead set against. You don't put private bathrooms or any plumbing or improvements to private property. The people who are pushing not to pick up trash on private property, I agree with that. 
I agree with not plowing on private property. I agree with that. I do not agree with eliminating pickup for trash for businesses. That is a service we provided for years. And we have some people that are behind all of those things. Let's don't do any of those services for the town, the people who live here. But on the other hand, they're willing to improve this piece of property over here with sewage and water. That's a gift from heaven, I guess. Taxpayer expense. That is just plain wrong. When we could build a facility on town property right across the street, there's definitely sewage there. That's a fact because it's a sewage pumping station. There may not be any water there, but that would be probably easy to fix or to have taken care of. I'm dead set against this whole arrangement. A very expensive phone call to Concord. And I'm, that's all I have to say. Any other uh, discussion? Um, I have a couple of comments. One is just to confirm um, the content of, of the motion. Um, one piece of it is, is authorizing entering into an agreement, entering mm -hmm. into a lease uh, Correct. with Mark said starting at $17,000 in 2014 and, and so on and so forth. Um, second um, piece of that is, is authorizing Fred to request that the budget committee increase the parking lot budget by $6,000. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third piece is increasing the default budget um, from the amount, incidentally, which is, is wrong in the Warren article here. I, I talked to Mike and he knows it. I'm sure it'll get corrected, but um, whatever reason, the um, amount in the uh, operating budget Warren article. That's been corrected several um, times. It was $10,000 high, whatever, but we're authorizing. So the third piece of this is increasing the Six default thousand. budget over and above by 6000 over <coughs> the number. Um, that we approved at last week's right. meeting. Those are the three pieces. I would also <coughs> add that that I believe that that um, what we ended up with was was a fair deal. The initial number going in represents exactly what the CPI has increased since 1992. And quite frankly, um, parking lots at Hampton Beach because of the transition of more day trippers versus families staying in cottages, whatever, are more lucrative over and above the CPI. And where we ended up starting out in 2014 is 32% is less than their original proposal. So I just want the public to know that we didn't just say, yeah, okay, um, to the first number that they um, threw out. So um, I may just say one uh, brief sentence, Mr. Chairman, uh, is I am not unsympathetic to the uh, sentiment and remarks uh, from the selectmen to my left. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Just let me More discussion? One, just one uh, small point. I did check with uh, Assessor Tinker today and asked him if this improvement would uh, present some extra value to the property, and he said minimal, very slight. And in addition, I believe the stipulation from the diocese is that at such time as the town may remove the uh, bathroom facility and shed and so forth from the property that the lines would have to be removed, which is also a minor consideration. Yeah. So it's technically not a permanent uh, enhancement to that piece of property. Yeah, that, that I think that parcel is assessed at over $800,000, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so $3,000. Yeah. Do you need oh. to uh, waive the bidding requirements? Wait. What? Do you need to waive the bidding requirements? Okay. Yes. And the fourth yeah. piece is... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you bid it. Does anybody else have some land down there? That I don't know. For parking it's more than $15,000, so I'm, I'm just concerned that it's in the purchasing policy. Right. We need to waive it. Okay, that's fine. Fourth yeah. is to waive the <laughs> bidding requirement. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Right this phone call is getting to be very cumbersome, isn't it? All in favor? Yeah. All opposed? Abstain? Yeah. Motion passes 301 with Nichols, Woolsey, and Pluff in favor. Uh, Pierce opposed and okay. being abstaining. And my comment about and opposing is for all the above reasons I stated earlier. And, it, and in this day and age, it is absolutely untenable for the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, to not provide provide sanitation facilities for employees. Please don't go there, Mayor Louise. You know okay. I about you calling Concord. Okay. I'll call Concord again. If Any I other old business? Right ahead. Yes, I'd, I'd just uh, like a, a few brief words, I please, like Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Nick Reed for his uh, synopsis of the comments uh, regarding uh, the state. 
uh, in our wonderful state. I'm a New Hampshire native. Many of my family are. And the state does a great job. And uh, our efforts are not to be confused with any uh, uh, negative remarks about this state. This is, is simply our <coughs> reckoning, our orientation of the mind, our executive input, from department heads, to the taxpayers, and to realize uh, how privileged we are to work with the state. And we, we seek only to, to uh, strengthen that relationship. And, it, and we're, we're, we're very, very fortunate uh, to have that opportunity. And I did want to go over some numbers just briefly. And if you extrapolate the town numbers to the state, and there's 15,000 residents in the town of Hampton. Every baby, every grandmother, every grandchild. And within these borders, within this state, within this town, uh, it's producing $150 million of revenue for the state. So for per capita production in this town, it's $10,000 per head of revenue to the state. In an email to the legislators a couple of years ago, we can hold our heads high in Hampton on how productive and how business oriented and, and what a high note we hit uh, in terms of our relationship with the state. And we'll, we'll, take, we'll take our position with any municipality in this state in terms of what we do for the state and how strategic and how important that relationship is. There's 1.32 million residents in the state of New Hampshire. And if that that scintillating performance that we provide year in and year out, recession in, recession out, boom in, boom out, then the revenue to the state would be $13.2 billion. Mm -hmm. and the budget, of course, is $5 billion. So uh, when we walk around as Hamptonians, when we go to Concord, uh, when we start proclaiming uh, that greatness, and not in a boastful way, but in a humble way, but as a, a very matter-of-fact way, I think we can start changing some of the legislative outcome that does not occur in Concord and start uh, getting some more attention. And when we get some of the fine data that the town manager and his department heads have, have started to bring forth, and they have operational exigencies that, that prohibit them from drilling down full time on this, we're going to get there. And uh, I'm fully confident of that. And uh, it's, uh, it's exciting to see how this, is, how this has manifested itself with different members of the board and, uh, um, the, again, the operational intensity in the town. And going forward, a roadmap might include uh, the Hampton Beach Village District, um, the Budget Committee, uh, department heads, of course, and our state legislators mapping out uh, a blueprint on where we're going to go and what we're going to do with this data. And so I, I appreciate that very much. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, we spoke about um, perhaps some impending Warren articles. This mm -hmm. board is not, and we're shifting gears to um, uh, sanitation, to refuse. Um, and we were talking about the cost of collecting trash. And this board, of course, has no warrant article mm -hmm. from the board to do anything about any of that. January 6th, um, uh, Mike Swotzer, our uh, finance director, has provided uh, to the board of selectmen with a carbon uh, CC to Fred Welch an analysis of the Municipal Sanitation Department. And it says, in response to Selectman Bean's request for historical analysis of the Municipal Sanitation Department, I submit the attached. I've used, used actual expenses from 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, and the 2014 budget. Fourteen years ago, we were $200,000 less than what has been uh, set aside or what we're looking at for the 2014 budget. Chairman Nichols wanted to drill down and comparing because I was reading off the annual reports and you'll find that uh, um, the numbers uh, are even more stark in, uh, in, in terms of realistic numbers. Uh, we're not spending it any more money than we were many years ago. We're spending less. In 2004, uh, we were spending uh, $133,493 more uh, than what we're going to spend on the 2014 for this line. We're not spending more now, we're spending less. In 2008, we were spending, or we spent $173,000, $199,000 more than we have budgeted for 2014. And in 2012, it's $79,161. So we're talking about 
what some might consider uh, to be a red herring issue where some folks we've had come in here that spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of ta taxes to the town. They have no other benefit from the town. And we're not spending more money on that service. We're spending less money on that service. Yet we we'll have perhaps a board member, and I hope that's not the case, and other citizens that are proclaiming that we have to curtail the expense of that service. And it's just a dog that won't fight it won't point and it won't haunt and I just wanted to share that and uh, without objection I would like to give the uh, uh, reporters access to this data. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, one comment Phil on the numbers. I've not seen this until a few minutes ago. I just pulled it out of mm -hmm. my pile. Um, I certainly I'm sure Mike's numbers are accurate so I don't have to see it first before they get it. That's not my point. But the most interesting part of this whole thing as I scan it, is that in 2004, solid waste tipping fees were $639,000, okay? <coughs> and in 2014, we're budgeting $550,000. Solid waste tipping fees have gone down, nine, despite the fact that the rate, I mean, we're paying about, what, $72 a ton or so now? I can't imagine. What, what, do you, what do you suppose, Fred, we were paying in 2004 a ton? A lot less, so it's only $10 less a ton, I think. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. 50 or $60 yeah. or whatever. Yet, so, yet solid waste tipping fees have gone down, and of course the transportation associated with that has gone down. A combination of the two have gone down by $100,000. Why do you suppose that is? Because of the recycling. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Something that, yeah. you know, all the, the negatives of we're only doing 32% and right. blah, 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 blah. Th that effort to be right. down by, by $100,000 yeah. right. when, when the rates have mm -hmm. gone up by 20% or whatever, mm -hmm. 72 is I think is pretty phenomenal. Oh, yeah. so. However, we are at present deriving no revenue from the recyclables. Number two, you, we just referenced a storm situation here where we really did not have sufficient manpower to do the plowing and the waste pickup. Number three, we spent over $2 million to set up the curbside recycling program, thereby doubling the effort of the Public Works Department, who has not, which not, has not had an increase in personnel in that time frame that you're happily referencing on there. And there is a tremendous strain on that department. So while the figures are interesting, I don't think they reflect the true impact on the Public Works Department of either the enhanced curbside recycling or the, uh, the personnel uh, difficulties. After okay. all, um, we are straining personnel to the limit and we are going to continue to have difficulties unless we can move in one direction or another and part of the direction is to get rid of that commercial trash. Mr. Chairman, I suggest we've talked about this before and we figured out the manpower with the automatic arms. Uh, I, I, I have problem. two comments I'll give you very specifically. Okay, I'm all set then. A um, couple on. of comments, Mary Louise. Yes. One is, is what went on last week between having a holiday on Wednesday yes. and having two snow days yeah. where you essentially miss three days of, of trash pickup because of a holiday and weather. Yes. You were never going to be manned um, to be able to keep up with that, okay? So in terms of the recent so thing, we're whatever. we're not picking waste, we're not taking gentlemen off the waste routes to plow? We did not. We're pulling men out of the sky to do the plowing? We did not pick up solid waste <laughs> on Thursday yes. because the procedure, and I think Keith and Fred are evaluating this, the procedure was if the schools canceled school, we were not picking up solid waste. Uh -huh. That is the reason we did not pick up on Thursday. Okay. Well, it was a messy day, obviously. Whatever. So to think that you're going to have manpower to be able to deal with losing Plows. three... We have pulled people out of the waste... Mary Louise, I let you plow. speak. Can I speak without being constantly interrupted? Thank you very much, okay? To think that you're going to, to keep up with something when you lose three days in a five-day week is, is, is just not realistic. It's ludicrous. You made a comment mm -hmm. that, that we doubled the, the, the workload... Um, when we took on recycling, okay? 
If you go back, and I'll use the, the, the summer figures, but I think I can probably remember them both. If you go back to, pr to the time prior to us taking, doing recycling, mm -hmm. okay, and just doing the trash, mm -hmm. okay, at that point we had four rear loaders. Each rear loader had a driver and two people. So there were three people on a truck. Four times three is 12 people. That was just to pick up trash. Mm -hmm. When we purchased, and that was in the summer, okay, mm -hmm. those are clear in my mind, mm -hmm. but the ratios are the same in the winter. When we took on recycling, we purchased three sidearm trucks, okay, and we're now in an environment of having three sidearm trucks and three rear loaders. Those three sidearm trucks take three operators. The three rear loaders, like the past, take three people to run them. So you've got three sidearms with three people, three rear loaders with three people each is nine. Nine and three is 12. 12 is the same number of people as back to pre-2011 when we had four rear loaders with three people on each one. Okay. okay, now whether the hours in the day are a little bit longer and some other nuances, I don't know. But to say we are not doubling the manpower requirements, that was the benefit of the investment in the sidearm trucks. It eliminated the need for six people by being able to have three trucks with three people as opposed to three trucks with nine people. Can you show me the week when all three sidearms are operating? Show me the week when all three of them out there. I, I, and there are places in this if, town if, where if, they if, can't if, go. If, if you wish to go get the facts and, 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 and want to come back and have some sort of you know, statistic on the sidearms are down 30% of the time. I don't think they are. The one time I asked that of Mike, the one time I asked that of Mike Gingras, they had not been down. So I think that's a bit of a red headache. Can we uh, move on to new yes. business? New business. Um, the only item under new business is the tree warden. We've agreed that that's deferred until after the March. Um, that's good. Ballot that's good. warrant article. Any other new business? Okay, seeing none. Consent agenda. Um, only item on the consent agenda is the schedule of selectmen's meetings and the schedule of um, department head quarterly updates. I think as I mentioned, Diana will be in next week, yep. as will yep. Chief Sullivan, so That's we actually good. have two. I'll move the consent agenda. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Okay, any closing comments? Yes, I have one, Mr. Chairman. I would like to thank the people of Hampton again and town employees, town government, etc. For all the support you've given me in the last period of time, I really do appreciate it. And if I had time, I'd send everybody a thank you. There would be so many, it probably take me six years to do that. So I'll send out a few. <laughs> but I really do appreciate all the support I've got from everybody. I really do. Thank you very much. That's because you live in a community that cares. Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Sure, I will. Right. So moved. <laughs> Moved by Mike, At seconded by Mike Crawford. What is it, 826? Yes, All sir. in favor? Meeting adjourned. We still have a few documents to